What's up guys? Welcome to another YouTube video. Today we are going to be analyzing uh, one of our subscribers one foot jump technique. Uh, this is the jump right here and we're going to be comparing it to what is probably LeBron James highest jump ever as shown here. Also just a quick reminder that if you go to thpstrength.com you can get customized online coaching from both me and John Evans. You'll get placed in a Facebook group with other THP athletes. You'll get access to a WhatsApp group chat with both me and John Evans. You can answer all your questions and you're going to get personalized programs so you can achieve whatever athletic goal you have. Best training on the planet. Go to thpstrength.com. If you guys want to see us analyze other jumpers and see everybody's two foot technique, one foot technique, let's get this video to 2000 likes and I will release part two of this video. Without further ado, let's get it started. Okay, so he's doing kind of like the lateral ball action, so like where the ball moves down to your opposite hip. Mm -hmm. And he's also, I would say his penultimate step isn't very low at touchdown, but then moves lower through the plant. Um, he does get like decent extension on that knee and hip. So similarly to what you saw in Jordan, um, on one foot, you'll also see this. You'll see the hip move into hyperextension and the knee extend. And that's kind of a sign that you're pushing really hard and you have a lot of speed. And then the more knee bend that you have, the lower that you are. So when he touches down, he's got roughly 45 degrees of knee flexion and relative to full extension. And then he's kind of moving into a little bit more flexion right there. He's a little deeper. I don't know exactly somewhere, I don't know, more than 45, less than 90 for sure. Kind of maintains that. And then here is still, you know, keeping that roughly 45. So for that, I'd say you need to be lower and you need to be faster if you really want to do it. The other thing is he is not, this foot doesn't seem to be far enough out in front and he's also not like leaning quite far back enough. So like I would assume that he's not going to have a ton of time. <coughs> you okay? COVID. COVID. Just kidding. I just did three fucking tests. <laughs> I don't so, have COVID. Oh, this is bad. So he's yielding a lot. He's like stomping through the floor. What do you mean by yielding? Uh, his knee is giving a lot. Like he's bending his knee a lot and then pushing up. So this I actually like. His push off is really good. So he gets this hip really high. And when you jump really high off one foot, that's something that you'll see. And you'll also kind of see the foot like rotate off the ground and like twist off the ground a little bit. So he did that too. So that's actually pretty good. Um, if he wants to finish this dunk, he needs to drop his right arm. but. That's just looking at the actual attempt. So some other things, if you look at LeBron James. LeBron James. You'll see that he does, we didn't see the earlier steps in the approach, but this is one of his highest jumps ever. So on this one, touches down. Torso's, I don't know, relatively. So looks like they're pretty similar there. Um, and then as LeBron goes through this, this is way different. You can see how much more flexion this leg is in right here. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be massively different from what is happening here. Yeah, that's his deepest point. It's not too bad. It's not, it's not terrible, relatively speaking. I think that probably the biggest difference is he's really slow. Yeah. Definitely going to be really slow. Because LeBron, LeBron's hitting that deep position while going super, super yeah, fast. So yeah. the forces are going to be way different. Yeah. He also, the other thing that he does better, I think, is he gets this, this takeoff leg right here. LeBron gets that takeoff leg out in front of him. And you can see this guy's kind of in the way. But his foot is way more extended, relatively speaking. Like yeah. his leg is basically going to be straight at this point. And if you look at this kid here he doesn't he doesn't get nearly the same extension so just going back and forth between those two that's going to be different and then lebron also has more rotational forces here so he's looking lebron's at the leaning back super well he's leaning well. he's leaning back and he's leaning in which is going to help him break better and more whereas this he's not really leaning back super well and this foot is not nearly as far out in front as it needs to be what should happen when you jump off one foot is you should have co-contraction at the rec fem so that's like the upper hip and he's not really doing that. It looks like he's like rolling through it versus LeBron who's like deflecting off the floor. So, so when you say rolling through, he's like... His uh, hips are rolling down and forward. LeBron's, oh, okay, okay. LeBron's are not. LeBron's hips, like when he plants his foot, it like stays... See how his hip stays in the same exact spot? He plants and his hip just stays in the same exact spot. Mm -hmm. It looks literally like a torpedo. Yeah. Just as like, or like a javelin was pushing to the floor. That's, that's essentially what you want to do. That loads your hip a lot. And then he gets a lot of rotational forces as he goes to push up. 
because he's leaning in and uh, backwards, and then uh, using like a side-to-side -side action to even get more force out of it through his glute. So jumping here, you can see his knees driving like towards the towards the paint actually. So like that can help a lot of guys with that. And obviously he gets his head like well above the rim. Here you can see that he's like, see how his hips are dropping? Like he plants his foot, look what his hip does. Rolls forward. Mm. See how his hip is rolling forward that whole time? Yeah, yeah. LeBron's like- Just stayed in place. Yeah, like he planted and it was like, you just see the hip jog. So how would you, hands. what would you do to fix that? Typically, like you have to teach moving through your hip and your foot and your like ankle Achilles and not through the knee. So like a lot of people want to kind of like stomp through the floor versus like loading up their hip. And some of that has to do with like the angle that you're pushing. Like I'm yeah. sure if you watch LeBron off the dribble, like sometimes he's going to not do that, you know, but on his highest jump ever, that's what he's doing, which makes sense. Cause like, that's what you see every good high jumper do as well. Yeah. And uh, I mean, typically like, getting that last stride, like the, the distance between the contacts longer and longer is going to help in dunking. In high jump, that's not always the case because you have a lot of speed, but a lot of the time that is the most, off in dunking, and this is where it differs, that is gonna be the most like, in high jump, it, it still is super aggressive too. It, it just kind of depends whether it's power jumper or speed jumper, but a lot of people are not super aggressive on that stride. That stride has to be like really aggressive, like you're pushing back as your leg is like kicking out in front of you and yeah. your leg is like by default should be basically straight like it feels very different and you don't like when i do it right it feels like yeah the stride distance is like perfect like mm -hmm. the contacts are the perfect distance from each other the foot is like way out in front of me and then i'm leaning back and yeah. i don't know it's like hitting a bullseye like you just all of the stars align because it, it looks very different like you can tell most poor one foot jumps you hear a stomp and then you see the knee bend a lot and then they and then people kind of just try to like power power through that and then when you see a really good one foot jump there's a lot of speed and then it's effortless like you don't hear it really you just hear like the foot kind of slide into the ground and then it's it's that deflection like the yeah. deflection happens and the knee a really really good one foot jumper there's like almost no knee bend yeah like, i think i think like Sutherland doesn't even have that much and he has he plants with knee bend, but his knee doesn't bend much more after that Yeah, whereas like I'm basically totally straight whenever I go to plant mine chase is chase Kilgannon's basically totally straight Tucker Ayer is another one that comes to mind. He's basically totally straight Zeus Zeus is the yeah. same way so I think like being able to keep that leg straight a lot of the time is going to help you from like avoid stomping and like this pushing action it becomes less like knee dominant and it becomes more hip dominant and that's where I think you get a lot of speed and better deflection and just I don't know like that's where my highest jumps have been on is yeah. whenever that last stride is like I don't know it's it feels like one two or like usually it's like one two three four that's what it yeah. feels like it's like one two three four and there's like a big stretch in my hamstring and my and like I have a bunch of co-contraction in my uh in my rec fem like my, yeah. my rec fem really contracts hard on my best jumps off one foot, dunking specifically, that is like one of the biggest things I notice. And then obviously my- Rec fem on your on my front leg? On my takeoff leg. So your rec fem is like up here, it's the muscle that crosses the hip. And as you extend the knee, the quad is shortening at the knee, but you're flexing the hip. So the, the knee is going from a bent position to an extended position, and your hip is moving into flexion. So if you were to like make the angle between his stomach and his thigh, like that angle is getting, um, should be getting smaller. Now, yeah. if he leans back, obviously that's not gonna happen, but he's relative to anatomical position, which is when he's standing up vertically, that should be happening. And as you go and extend into that position, you are also contracting on the other side of your leg. So like when you touch down, there's all this energy built up in your hip and through that like blocking sensation that happens where your like glute is kind of involved and your like upper hamstrings involved, I think that you, like there's just a lot of force held up in, in the rec fem, in the quad. I mean, that's obviously also an, an extensor as well. So yeah, it, it can really kind of like add to the jump. And I mean, this is like very complex stuff, but <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, prior to you touching down, you're, it might even be less co-contraction. It might even be more um, pre-contraction. Yeah. 
so like prior to touching down that quad is like already cinching down <clears throat> generating force and then like when you touch the ground it's you know it's like wound up and you have really good braking forces and yeah everything just kind of aligns in your hip you just get like a really big push off your hip and then the mm -hmm. other thing that happens in really good one foot jumps that he actually does well is the free leg hip moves really high like really high up and in front and if you watch lebron so this hip right here is driving like if you look at the angle of his waistband here you can see that the free side hip is actually higher and that means that like he's getting that good blocking action and the free leg which is the drive knee that side like your glute on that side is like driving hard upwards so there's also like a lateral component to this right like he's also moving he's moving forward and blocking forward but he's also kind of doing it side to side so that's why the inward and backward lead can help um so yeah all those things are going to make like a big difference in really good one foot jumps in my opinion that i've seen all right guys thanks for watching make sure that you like comment and subscribe and don't forget if this gets to 2000 likes we will do another review but for two foot jumpers like we said if you're interested in coaching go to thbstrength.com we appreciate you guys and we will catch you in the next video peace out